Open Limited. Open desktop computers, laptops, printers, copier machines, air conditions, TV, UPS, inverters, CCTV cameras, USB HD cameras, network cables and switches, RJ45, RJ11, hard drives, pen drives, any computer accessories, PR, Bra, Al Qasim Company Limited. Your first floor, opposite Miracle Films. You're buying top of my shoes. A doom kumasi. Who pebia to a now pebia to a friend? It was 0243 Al Qasim Company Limited. A bear from Fidi Papa Pavi. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وشفيعنا المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد um, In the first place we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for granting us this day um, We thank him for our lives, we thank him for our health and we thank him for the opportunity to be here again on set um, as you are aware, this is your favorite program, the book review show on Mam Online Radio and TV. I am your host. My name is Abdel Aziz Shahib Ishaq. Alhamdulillah, today helping me with the program, I have with me Brother Abdel Fatah Saeed. Yes, Brother Abdel Fatah Saeed is here. And then Brother Idris Mohammed Awal. And then also, we also have with us Sister Zakia Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. Now, as you are aware, the book we are dealing with, the book we are treating at the moment, is. The Muslim Home by Sheikh Muhammad Saleh Al Munajid. In fact, we have treated this book for some weeks now. Um, I've even lost count, and um, hopefully, this today we are going to try as much as possible to finish with the book, and then next week, inshallah, we we'll start with another book, inshallah. So, um, gentlemen and ladies, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Um, today we are concluding on the book, The Muslim Home. So we'll be dealing with the evils in the home. I think we have about six subtopics under that, or five subtopics under that, and then we have the home inside out, inshallah. So um, I will begin with you, Brother Abdel Fattah. As far as the evils in the home is concerned, we have to look at things that will not, you know, head us towards committing shirk and all that. So you know, things that contain symbols of false religions and other things, and then also pictures of animate objects. So what is the Islamic stance on these things as far as building the home is concerned, inshallah? Inshallah. Unto his household and to be all those who are following the right steps to the day of Kiyami. Allah died as the true way. Alhamdulillah, per what you have asked concerning our book review show, inshallah, as we are treating on evils in the home. Um, I've been asked about the rem um, removing everything that contains symbols of the false religions of the Kufar, or let's say they are goals and objects of worship. And uh, as the topic demands. Um, as you can see, the topic has a lot of words. But let's firstly look at that word home. That word home. Let's look at something about that. So looking at the home, we can um, explain the home to be like in a, a, a normal sense. It's a place where we live to enjoy best of our family times. So with this, therefore, setting all things right in the home in accordance with Islamic teachings is a great and huge responsibility which every Muslim man and woman should undertake as Allah commands us to. So also as a Muslims, we can't live in our homes without um, the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to seek for Allah's mercy in our homes. So with this, we are obliged to do away with all, or let's say, to overcome any obstacle of evil 
that's it between us and the presence of Allah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like in our homes. So this is all because the Prophet Muhammad so, wasallam, warned us by saying, whoever of you, or let's say whoever of us, who sees an evil action, let him change it. By what? First, Rasulullah stated that by the use of the hand. Mm -hmm. Just by getting rid of it, by the use of the hand, taking action against it. Either by the ten you using your hand to take it off or anything or action that you can take with the hand and then he's um and, and he said if he cannot do it by taking action with the hand then with his tongue that's by way of speaking it out saying it letting people to know the good and bad of it inshallah and if he can't do that one too then he brought it down by telling us that then with the heart how will you deal it out by the heart? It's just by having the feeling that the thing is wrong. Having such feeling in the heart is by it. But um, the most um, falling out of it is that he said that by the way of dealing with the heart is that the, the weakest of all feet that the person is having. So in order not to come down to the weakest feet, it is better we try by the tongue or by the hand, inshallah. Yeah. So as we are doing now, we are doing by the tongue to the whole jamaah, let's say aclo across the globe, telling them the good, the do's and the don'ts in our homes at a yeah, okay. So dealing with the removing from our homes all symbols or let's say false religion images and like the idolatries and stuff. Yes, but Islamic ethics, based in Allah, we have to remove from our homes all symbols of false religions. We have to. The, and the images of their gods and idols and any of their object of worship, is, we have to remove them from our house. Mm. Why is that so? As Muslims who have had the greatest confession of Tawheed Allah, Wallahi or let's say Kalimatul Tawheed, should set all those images or as his greatest enemy. You have to. So far as you believe in the oneness of Allah, all those images has to be set off from your homes. Why? Because we set things in our home of prayers. It firstly distracts us during worship. That's the first thing that we should know. If you're having such things in your homes, it distracts you during your worship to or your service to Allah. And the Prophet wasallam used to warn his own wives. He, the Prophet, he was used to warn his own wives of any time of the creation or like of anything of the creation that was uh, distracting him of worship. He warns the wives to take them off and he destroyed them from the room. So with this, even he as the prophet is doing this, how more we? So again, Aisha, radiallahu anha, may Allah please with her. And the wife, or the lovely wife of uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, reported to have said, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would never leave anything in his house that had crosses. Let's say those uh, things that they are imagined that Jesus Christ was being crucified on. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam never and ever leave those things on in his room except he would what, destroy such a thing. When he sees it, the heart just pumps. He don't like having such a thing in his room. So now, if the prophet with all guidance has rejected it, how more we? He, the prophet, with much of guidance from Allah, has rejected all these things. How more we? Who don't even know our left from our right? We also have to. But nowadays, what we are suffering today is what we are to come on. Why? Right? Because most of the times when you are dealing with such a things like this, you can get somebody who will question you. Mm. It, is, it is hardly to compare us to those people. I mean, their time and our era is somehow different. Now we live in a technological era. Their time wasn't like our time. So how should we be always forcing ourselves to do what Rasulullah did? And the question, why don't we force ourselves? You see, mm. each and every era has its own temptation. We have believed in the Kalimatul Tawheed. 
and we are facing a temptation of Allah through this technological world. Mm -hmm. So why don't we get rid of this technology and go straight forward to what Allah demands from us? At long last, Allah created us. He owns us. He knows what is best for us, not we. Mm -hmm. We are serving Him, not Him serving us. So we have to obey His rules and regulations. Imagine you are in a home with your parents. They gave birth to you in the home. You have to go by their laws, their rules, their sayings. You can't do anything by your own. If you fail them, they also fail to provide their needs to you. So that's how it happens between we and Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us take note of those things, inshallah. Mm. So, but nowadays, as we are saying, we are suffering from having manufactured goods, which we bring from the Kafir countries, let's say um, the foreign countries, which includes images and engravings and also drawings of their uh, idolatry images. Mm -hmm. This includes various kinds of crosses, pictures of Jesus and Mary, pic uh, pics of their churches or like, let's say their synagogues and stuff, yes. statues of Buddha, Greek gods, like all the goddess of love and good and evil and so on. Shehu. But isn't it love? Let's take uh, our country here for example. We don't have much technology in the way of creating our own things. Here is the case whereby we depend on the white people. Mm -hmm. Most of the white people to do things based on their faith. Let's take Indians, for instance. Indians have knowledge of producing a lot of things or manufacturing things. And they do with some things in praising their or their goals. So they can do things as it is coming. They have some drawings or need that signifies their Buddhists and stuff and that. And you are going to buy that thing into your room. Somebody will say, it is in the room, I don't pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. Why should you have it in the room? First thing, let us take note. Prophet told us that even, this comes to the second part of the question, that having images and stuff, I'm just combining each, every, uh, all of them together. Yes. Let's see, Prophet warned us that even having pigs in your room, it is haram. Why is it haram? Because, like when angels are to enter a room with pictures, Animate uh, pictures of animates. Animate stuff. The easy is that they won't. So when the Rasulullah Sala was to enter his room, he go to the gate and stood, never entered. Aisha was like, How is Rasulullah upset of me or what? When he came out to ask Rasulullah, why are you out? Why are you not entering? Rasulullah out of anger told Aisha that I am I will never enter that room until you remove that thing from the gate. Oh. Just as a catching. But it was having such an animate things on it that what would disallow angels to come into the room. Mm -hmm. So a room without angels, how can he, the prophet, will enter? That was the reason why he what he set himself off from the room until Aisha, Aisha to wasala, I asked for one was in. Aisha anha removed the curtain from the door until Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam entered into that room. So it is telling us that even he, that's the question, even he with all guidance, mm -hmm. is saving himself out from such things. Who has all the heart, the good heart, to think of good things, is saving himself out from such a thing. How more we? Bamala, one thing, let's come to our era, let's come down to our era now. Most of them, or most of our things in our womb, that's making us make such a mistake is that. One is what I mentioned as an example from the hadith that I quoted from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our curtains that we use in our room is one. Two, nowadays, we are learning the kufars, the kafirs, to the standard after marriage, husband and wife want to have their pictures being printed into their room. Whoever enters the room should see them even with the day that they got married. So you see them they're creating the entire room with such pictures. Mm. Based in Allah, you it's, it's get, become very common. Wallah, you will enter a, mus, a, a, a house of Muslims. You will enter there and see all these things, decorate, uh, using it as a decoration in their rooms. How should it be? We, we have been told that even those who show that pictures, Rasulullah said, at the day of judgment, Allah will call on to them to what? To bring them to light. Wow. He cares those who make images. Rasulullah cares them by the command of Allah, not even himself. So why should we entertain such a thing? I quite remember way back in Agriculture, some years past, I was very young, when we were in Makaranta, 
And the Malam told us that even having a picture is haram. <laughs> so I quite remember one day, Eid time, after Eid, we came home and my mom called all the children, his, his cho her children, that he wanted to have picture with us. At least for some time, he wanted to see like a hand so that he would remember us in some way. And I rejected that offer of having the picture with the yes. family. And while I, that, that day, we were living in a compound house. Malam ketu no no. You see, these are some things that the shaitan is like creating into the heart of Muslims. When you start doing practicing Islam, the community will start giving you some name for you to even what, resist from it. Yeah. That's how shaitan is doing now. But Malam, be easily allowed to Allah. Let us take note of this thing. And it is something that, that, that needs to be talked against. We should want ourselves. We are not saying we shouldn't take pictures. But what kind of picture are you taking? Malam, what is the intention of that picture that you are taking? Is it just for a fashion or for something purposeful? Having a passport picture is not something haram. Because it is meant for something. You can't just not take a passport picture in your room die. For what? It has a purpose of doing but for you just to take oh, some well, years past me. But isn't it love? Yeah. I had a friend who one day looked at his old picture and cried, saying, why has Allah done such a thing to him? Why? Because at that time, he was having money. He was having form. But that time that he looked at the picture, Allah tempted him to the extent that his money or well was that way to the extent that oh, no. to the extent that even he was having a whole sort of diseases and was going so, like, why am I like this? So, all these things is something that don't even allow us to praise Allah in some way. So, if Islam is telling us not to do something, we shouldn't go further to ask some reasons. Uh, no, if Islam says no to it, just take the no. If it says yes to it, let us take the yes to it. So, it's absolutely bad for... Um, Islamic home of the monotheism Muslim to have in it the symbols that compete supremacy with Allah or symbols of shirk that contradict Tawheed and destroy its foundation. Thus, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu used to destroy crosses and also by blotting them out um, if they are drawn or engraved on the walls and stuff. So, somebody may also say, as I'm ending, somebody might say, what well, this thing that we are saying is just a religious extremism. Mm. By Mala, this is not religious extremism. No, because the one who forbid people to go to extremes, the Prophet Sallallahu did this himself. He himself did it. So I don't see why people will say such a thing. Understand. So with regards to this, we entreat family members, especially our family heads, and all of our Muslim Omar within a community to at least be quite a vigilant when buying verses or let's say mattresses or anything um, to the home without such um, abominable images and stuff. Uh, mostly the pomade and so cosmetic products that we even use, much of them are being branded with these images and stuff. So my mother even told me, having the pomade is no haram, but maybe the picture on it might make it be haram for you. So when you buy, you can just take off the brand, use the container. With the, it's the thing inside that you want, not the branding. No. So why just don't just take off the um, the branding out of it. It's just a printed thing. Take it off and use the container with what does you need inside yeah. it. Simple. So I will end here by saying, um, Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, brother. Now, all this is for our own good. Um, avoiding these pictures and other things is to allow angels to come into our home. And if angels are in a home, it, it creates a good atmosphere. Yeah. And it's, it's a home that's, that's not entertain genes and other negative um, 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 forces. So it's for our own good, inshallah. This the, this is uh, this aspect actually touches on the aesthetics of the home, you know, decoration and other things. Well, I'll come to um, Zakia um, later on for that. But before then, I'll go to Awal to look at some of, some, you know, two things that we mention a lot in, in our religious <coughs> setting, in our Islamic setting. Um, one has to deal with smoking. <laughs> And the other one also has to do with keeping a dog in the home. Now, uh, not allowing smoking in the home and also not keeping a dog in the home, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
We thank Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for granting us this day. May Allah increase us in knowledge and forgive our shortcomings. May Allah put us among those who gain from the month of Ramadan, and uh, we are so fasting. Inshallah, may Allah grant us the blessings. Um, <coughs> Islam, as we all know, if we really practice Islam, Inshallah our lives will not be the same. Why am I saying this? Whatever the Quran or an authentic hadith prohibits to us, you will find out later on that it was for our own good. Now the question of should we allow smoking in our home? Is smoking haram or makruh? Or it is halal? You know, mostly the Muslim apologetics, when this issue pops up, what they say is that smoking is not haram, but it is makruh, something detestable. Now, Allah said, This is the book in which there is no doubt, there is no confusion. Hodan, this will be the basis of whatever I say today. Hodan, it is a guide to those who are wise, those who are pious, those who are Allah fearing. Mm. You know, Allah always said that He's always he, Allah always talks to those who fear Allah and those who are wise. Mm. So you always see that Allah will talk and say, La alakum taqilun, la alakum tatakun. And we should be very careful. We always want to follow the masses. No. Throughout the Quran, whatever Allah mentions, many, Allah doesn't say good things about them. Whenever Allah mentions few, it means Allah is going to say good things about them. Like, La alakum taqilun. And few of my um, um, servants are those who are wise. La lakum tatakun. Few of my servants are those who fear or they are fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La lakum tu'minun. And few of you believe truly in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La lakum tashkurun. And few of my servants, few of my servants give thanks to me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is telling us that we, as Muslims, we shouldn't always follow the crowd, but we should follow the few who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, you hear smoking is makruh, detestable. Let's look at the harmful effects of smoking. If you buy a cigarette, there is an inscription on it. What is the inscription? Smoking causes fatal diseases to your health or to your lungs. Yes. Now you are going to buy something and you see this inscription and you are going you are going to argue with me that Islam is saying smoking is makruh. It is not haram. What of your health? If you, if if you agree with me that Quran says we shouldn't do things or we shouldn't kill our own self with our own hands. Yes. Whatever you are doing, if it is good, alhamdulillah, to your health, fine. If it is not good, then it means otherwise it will affect your health. So there is enough evidence in the Quran and an authentic hadith that talks about the food that we eat, that we consume. Because Allah divided food into good and bad. It's two. We don't have intermediate. When it is not good, it is bad. Like Jannah. You don't have someone will go to Jannah, someone will go, someone will go to uh, Jahannam, and someone will be in the middle. So, what is your um, position there? What are you doing there? Half Jannah, half there. Yes. <laughs> so, may Allah grant understanding. Um, so, Allah divide food into two categories. That is, they are good and permissible, and that are evil and forbidden. Good and permissible. 
There are some, some two are good, but they are not permissible. No. So good and permissible, and the bad ones, and they are also what? forbidden. No. Surah Al-Araf, a dalil to what I'm saying, Quran 7, verse 157, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing our attention to the fact that he has made lawful for us or for them good things and made unlawful for them, we mankind, impure things. Some things are impure. Let's take the meat of pig, for instance. It is impure in itself. The Bible says it, the Quran says it. So, as a proper Muslim who wants to bring up proper children to become proper adults, to, be, to, um, to influence the society positively, we must shun smoking in our homes. Secondly, if you all agree with me, our children, they learn by observing, imitation, and participation. They will observe what you are doing. They will imitate, meaning they are participating in what you are doing. If you are eating that which is lawful, definitely they will eat the same thing. If you are eating or taking something unlawful, definitely they are going to take the same thing. Let's say you smoke, you as a father, and you send your son to go and light your cigarette for you. What are you teaching the child? In the next minute, if you see the child smoking weed, what will you say? You will not agree. Who taught him? You. So in order to acquaint our home with good manners, it is better we shun smoking in our homes. Quran chapter 2 verse 57 it's also a dalil to what I'm saying. Allah said, eat of the good things which we've provided for you. The good thing, that's the underlying word. Eat of the good things. So it means that there are many foods on the surface of this earth, but some are bad and impure for our bodies, and some are not permissible, are forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, our viewers and cherished listeners, what we have to say about not allowing smoking in your homes is that if you start smoking in your home or you allow those who smoke to enter your homes, they are going to affect your family negatively. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that anyone who befriends a bad person is that someone who works the bellows, as we said at that time. What is a bellow? An air blower, like the one the blacksmiths use. They will either burn your clothes or they will burn your house. So those with bad manners, especially those who smoke, will burn your house with immorality, will burn your house with un-Islamic activities. So brothers and sisters and cherished viewers, smoking it is, it is detestable, as we all say. But looking at the harmful effects, it is better we do away with it. May Allah forgive us and grant us understanding. So... If you are afraid that people may smoke in your home, put up stickers to hint to people that you do not want them to smoke in your home. If you smoke, I can't prevent you from smoking, but in my home, no. Because my children are there. My wife, my brothers are there. If you smoke in their presence, you are going to bend their good manners away. May Allah forgive our shortcomings. Amen. So if you realize that someone wants to commit this sin in front of you, you have to stop him in whatever way it is appropriate. Else, if you leave them like that, it will now do not help us all. May Allah forgive our shortcomings and grant us goodness. Mm -hmm. The next one, as to, can we keep dogs in our homes? Yes. No. Maybe. Depending on the situation at hand. Dogs can be kept in the home if it is for one security purpose. Yes, security reasons or purpose. Or for agricultural purpose. Or for hunting. You know, some of us stays at new sites. The rate of theft cases that we record every day. If I'm to tell you, you marvel. So if you have a dog, alhamdulillah, for security reason, alhamdulillah, Islam allows it. Anything contrary to this, Islam doesn't allow. Why? Because angels don't enter houses where there is a picture 
as my brother was saying, or houses where there are dogs. If dogs are in our houses, angels don't enter the house. But we always pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day. You want Allah to bless you. And uh, Allah can bless you directly, but sometimes the angels send the blessings to you, to your house. These angels will be coming and the dogs will see them and will bark at them. They will go back. Then where is your blessing? So other than security, agriculture, or hunting, brothers and sisters, our cherished viewers, as a Muslim, you can't keep a dog in your home. This is the little I can say. Has our law on Allah. So, why not call it Malana? Can I give you a question to that? Inshallah, in the grand alim. If um, keeping a dog um, may disallow angels from entering the home, no. uh, what about you keeping the dog for security purposes? If no. you are keeping the dog for security purposes, won't that also deter the angels from entering the home? Well, Allah on Allah. Whether Allah knows, but you know, mostly, mostly. Like we all say, normal amal bin niyat. Dogs, sometimes what our scholars say is that we spend money in feeding them, in doing this, in doing that, mm -hmm. which we can use the money for other purposes. We see that some people will just bring the dog in the house for nothing, just as their pets. Mm -hmm. No, you can't just keep a dog as a pet. But the security aspect, you know, you know most of the time we keep them in a cage. Mm -hmm. So in the case when they hear some have senses, immediately they hear something, they start to bark to make sure that or to inform you, mm -hmm. the owner of the house, that something is happening over there, inshallah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Malam Idris uh, Muhammad Awal. Now let me go to my dear sister Zakia. Now, you're like we were discussing with um Brother Abdel Fatah about you know curtains and uh, hanging stuff in the home. Yours has to deal with you know decoration in the home in general, too much decoration, and then also after that you also have to look at choosing a location. You know the factors to consider in choosing a location in the design of a home, inshallah. Um, thank you, brother. Um, as our brother was saying about mm. the curtains and the stuffs mm. that we keep in our houses, yes, Islam does not allow us to um, put pictures and um, some, um, how should I say it? Over the creative yes, materials. Yes. Mm. It doesn't help us at all because mm -hmm. we want angels to enter our homes. Mm -hmm. But here is the case that we we bring pictures to the houses and Shaitan too can work through that. Mm -hmm. There can be a case that genes can be hidden in those things. You, you can't be aware if they are there. We don't have such eyes. Mm -hmm. So to prevent that thing, you have to avoid those kind of pictures everywhere in your home, keeping it simple for your family. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. But to bring pictures everywhere in the house, making the home as if it's a um um music, yeah. yeah. Some disco or yeah. yes, yes. It doesn't it, it doesn't help us at all. Mm. What Islam says about those things, it it helps us. We that's what our brother was saying. If we are to follow Islam, it will be good for us all mm. because Islam is everything. Islam taught us everything, how to do everything for our own good. Mm. So if we really want to be happy, to have peace of mind, I think we have to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu mm. alaihi wasallam. Um, so pictures in the houses, well, no, it's not allowed. Um, just a very simple thing, no flowers, but just small. It should be moderate. Yeah, uh -huh, it should yeah. be extreme. Extreme, yeah. yes, thank you. But to the pictures, uh, no, the pictures we should we should try. We should try and avoid the pictures. We should try our very best and avoid the pictures. 
Um, on that one, our brother have already explained that to us. So I'll go to our next topic, which is choosing, choosing a, good a good location and design for our homes. Yes, as a good Muslims, and we want our children to be also good to be good and, and responsible Muslims. Yes, thank you. We also we all it's our responsibility as parents. Hmm. Um, not just giving birth or uh, taking the child to school. You have paying to, school fees. Yes. That's not only your responsibility. It's also your responsibility for the child to also grow in morals. Mm. You can't send your child to a place where there are only, um, sorry to say, um, immoral people. Yes, you can't send your child to a place where there are smokers or, sorry to say, prostitutes everywhere for them to witness what they do. Mm -hmm. You have to send the child to a place where you can control him or her. Exactly. There should not be more children or, like, that the child wants to follow them. Mm -hmm. That we want to go here, we want to go there. Partying and clubbing and all that. Yes. If you go to such place... Whatever that you tell your child, I don't think... They are going to follow. Yes. You, you find because other people raising It's peer child. pressure. Yeah, yes. If I see my friends going, I'll go. But here is the case. You are not staying at the, those places. You are staying in a cool place where you can control your child. Yeah. I don't think you will see he or she will see those people and want to follow them. Chief Obe can say, when you and who are time. But if you see them, you will like, you'll be eager to know what they do. So you one day be at time to follow them, see what they do. So I think we should, the place to, the, there must be a mox. If not in, around Krana, like, Between maybe, some yes, a very short distance. distance. Mm -hmm. For them to always, you see, staying around the mox to have, a lot of advantage to we the muslim um case or the muslim adult everybody everybody mm -hmm. who is a muslim mm -hmm. it always reminds you moreover if you are even not in the mood to pray cry the moment you see your friends going to the place you hear the azan you hear the azan everybody is going even if you don't want to pray you have to go because everybody is going that's why you have to locate the place should be a place where the people there are really responsible responsible, responsible. so i think that will be okay now, thank you very much um sister zakia for that elaboration on choosing a location what um we have next is uh, you know brother Abel Fatah. No. this will be an extension from what um, sister zakia has been talking about um choosing a location now choosing a location here you are going to deal with you know the neighbor this, this subtopic is saying choosing the neighbor before the house. Yes. So what do you have to tell us about that? Sure, man. Um, as we do all know, mm. alhamdulillah, for coming back again on uh, teachings, mm -hmm. we are now talking about uh, choosing out a neighbor. Who is a neighbor? A person who stays with either in one house or even within a society a or let's say a, com a community. Um, the question is um, <coughs> choosing the neighbor before the house. Bismillah, in Allah, show. Um, you see, there is something that we call socialization. How do you socialize yourself with people? It's one thing that we should consider. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been the picture of Islam. It is him that we are all following. So whatever that you want from Islam, you ask Islam from Rasulullah. Mm -hmm. How do we ask Rasulullah? By going back to the hadith. What and how have you reported that Rasulullah lived his life in this world? That's what we should ask. Choosing a neighbor has a two different dimensions. As my brother was saying when he was to start his topic, everything in this world has its two ways. It is either good or bad. Right. We have heaven, we have hell. We have boy, we have girl. Everything is in two pairs. So everything, if it is not good, it then it is bad. So if you are to choose a neighbor, the question is, 
What kind of neighbor are you choosing for yourself, your family, as a Muslim? Why? Because where you are living right now, you see, what my sister was saying, talking about socialization, the community, the neighbor is having much influence on even our children that we are training. Much than we do because... Yeah, especially if you're a busy parent, you see, you're always at work. Morning, you, you are off to work. Me. You come back, you, that stuff. So choosing the neighbor, having a good one from it, will help you even in a way of what, training your children. Yeah. And somebody might say, I quite remember last time a lady asked me at my at the mock setup place that um, is it Islamic to associate yourself with non-Muslims and stuff? Oh yes. It's all fall under choosing a neighbor. So yeah. one thing let us take a note here. Rasulullah told us something that people are not realizing. Rasulullah told us that where your house is, from your right side, count houses up to 40. Take them to be your family members. From your left side, count up to 40. Take them to be your family members. Front and back, same thing. The, what is the ideology here? The idea of all this is that I have counted up to 40. And each of my countings are also counting up to 40 to be their hot family members. So if the last 40 of me is counting another 40, if he is my family member, his family members are my hot. So at the end, Rasulullah is telling us that the community that you are living, it is good for you to give a good moral to all people whom you are living with within a society. You see. But if you are to choose a neighbor, you have to pray to Allah. Why? Because Rasulullah Sallam prayed to Allah in choosing his neighbors. Why? Because we have good ones and the bad ones. So he wanted to resist himself from the bad neighbors. That's why he asked Allah. Allah knows the best. Allah should help him in the way of even choosing a neighbor. A neighbor. You see, but these days, what do we see? You see a child of an imam living with a trauma addicted person within the same society mm -hmm. no one is talking against it. Mm -hmm. it it has become something normal at the back of imam is where um you, uh, the community guys will meet and having this sort of um uh, fancy things and smoking and stuff like they call them they call that place um they have some names of such uh, such place that they they they, they, they meet it ghetto and stuff. Base. Base. You see, the easy love. All these things, you see, the kind of neighbors that you are choosing for yourself, well, like, it, it will be it will very good for you to live alone without a neighbor than to choose a bad neighbors for your family. Thanks. It is very good for you. Be an indoor with your family than to choose a bad neighbor for your family. Because when you are not there, they are training your child. They are training them. So what they are into it is what they will train your children into. into. Yeah, let's save us. I mean, how many times have we, have, have we asked our children when we come back from our work, that have we even prayed? What kind of friends are they associated to? Have we been asking them? We live with the Kafirs. Most of our friends are non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. And here is the case, whether it is Salat, I mean, you yourself, you find it hard to even what, resist yourself from them to go to the mosque. Why? Because that time, when I'm coming to the bar. You see, so these are all things that we should consider in choosing neighborhood for our family. The easy love. So, to cut everything short, mm -hmm. if you are choosing neighbors for our family, let us go to how Rasulullah Sallam taught us by first praying to Allah to direct us, mm. to show us the good ones and also uh, ha like giving a good morals. At times, the kind of lifestyle that you, the father or the mother put up in the society makes even someone feel even become afraid of even associating himself to even your children when that person seems himself to be some somebody who is bad, like it negates to your 
children and stuff. So at times, the kind of moral value that we leave with our neighbors also amount to how our children will also live or our family will also live with uh, some of our neighbors whom we live with in our society and stuff. Mm-hmm. So inshallah, with regards to what you are, that's a little thing that I can elaborate on. Um, much of it goes to Allah and the, th- the what we said, that's also not good to me. Allah forgive us. And also mm-hmm. Okay, now before we move to the next subtopic, we have two more subtopics. Uh, paying attention to the necessary repairs in the home and making sure that the amenities are in good working order. And then that will be tackled by Awal. And then paying attention to the family's health and safety, which will also be tackled by Bekia. Before then, I think this really caught my interest, you know, discussing the neighborhood and, you know, the kind of environment you live in. Um, I want to put this question across. Is it, does it mean we should all live in the Zungu community? If no, if no, then what kind of environment are we talking about when we talk about you know choosing the right neighborhood? Um, will you go first or should we talk about? Okay, I will give me give me your. <coughs> I want to hear what you have to say on that. Now, salamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The lead to what you are saying is in the Quran. Mm-hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu o you those who believe take Allah fi Allah wa kunu ma'as sadiqin and always be with the truthful ones so none of us say that we should all live in the zungo communities because even some muslims the quran and hadith and other they say describe them as fasics fasik is someone he is a muslim all right perpetual sinner very good <laughs> So these are all Muslims, so but the hadith say we should detach ourselves from them. So when we say when we say a good neighbor, a good neighbor is someone who is truthful. That's a society or people whom we can trust with regard to our um, property and our children. You know, there can even be a Muslim, our Muslim brothers, who can even protect our property when we are away. But some non Muslims can do that. You know, I had a Muslim, a uh, non Muslim brother back at school. When it's time for Salat al Fajr and I'm still sleeping, you wake me up. But sometimes, in other places, you have a Muslim brother, you all, you all be sleeping when it's time for Salat. So the Quran says, some of the people, some, some of the people of the book, that's the Dalit is in Quran chapter 3, verse 110. Allah said, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhudriyat lina ta'amruna bil ma'arufa tanhawna anil munka wa tumi unna billah. You are the best of community, the best of nation, raised for the benefit of mankind. Why? You enjoy upon what is good, and you forbid what is bad for yourself and for the community that you find yourself in. And you believe in it, Allah. So Allah said, had the people of the book believed, it would have been better for them. Some of them are good, but majority of them are bad, are straight. So it means even some some of the Al Kitab members, some are very, very good. Yes. The Quran said there are some of the people of the book. If you give this phone to them to keep for you, you will go and back and find the phone where you kept it mm-hmm. without anything. But as a fellow Muslim brother or sister, you will give something to him or her, you will not find it again. In an authentic hadith, the prophet said that there are some people of the Al Kitab. If you give them even a CD, you go back, you go and come back, you will find a CD. There are so our Muslim brothers and sisters whom we are living with. If you even entrust them with 50 pesos, you will not see it again. So it's about those who are truthful, those who fear Allah. Because some, some of the Al Kitab, they, they, some of them, if you look at their lifestyles alone, the only thing they lack is that they are not Muslims. Mm. But looking at how they help the community to develop, how they work um, wholeheartedly, how they bring up children, it's in accordance with Islam. Just that they are not Muslims. Mm. So when you say choose good neighbor, I mean choose people who are trustworthy. Mm. Inshallah. May Allah grant understand. Um, mm. Thank you very much, uh, Idris Muhammad Awad, for that. Zakiya, would you add anything to that? Or? Well, not much, mm. but... For me, I would like to stay in a place which is... Um, Muslim we, dominated. No, not that. Not that we should all be Muslims. Mm-hmm. We, you can stay in a place where you are the only Muslim, but your compound, like, you are the only one in the compound. You are safe inside. 
there is no case where your children will look after some people's case and say mommy this girl did this the mom did i don't want you to look to some people's life and tell me to do the same you thing for you stay in a compound house yes i just want to control my child i want to teach her islam so i don't want a place where there will be a lot of people for her so to many get other influence yes there will be so much influence mm -hmm. everywhere coming from every corner although the, it can be a muslim community but the way as our brother was saying some of our muslim brothers and sisters too <laughs> well <laughs> may allah make it easy for us um, um, thank you very much um, let's do the last two subtopics and then we will conclude, inshallah. Idris Muhammad Awal. Um, here we are talking about repairs and then making sure that the amenities in the home are all in uh, good shape, inshallah. Um, let's hear what you um, Thank you very much. Two to three yeah, minutes. inshallah. This, this, in, a, in brief, mm. my senior brother used to tell me something. Always he says it. He says that, always say that as a husband, you are everything. You are a mason, a plumber, an electrician, a, a fufu pounder, everything. <laughs> yes. As a husband, you are everything. You know, among the blessings of Allah in this modern age are the mod cons, are the modern conveniences. Things that make our lives convenient, like the fridges, the washing machines, and so on. So, these things, once we become used to them, when it breaks down, it becomes very difficult to live, especially in our homes, especially when your fan spoils. Yes. If you had no fan, the room temperature yeah, is normal, normal, like where I am. But if you have a fan and it stops working, that's where you, you see that, oh, this room is very hot. Yes, you feel the absence of it. If you are using the washing machine, you just dump everything in, it washes it for you, it does everything for you. Now, we, we also have um, a gadget that irons the uniform for you. In just two minutes, three minutes, all the uniforms will be ironed. If you have all these things, you know, life becomes more convenient for you. But when they spoil, that's where you begin to feel the, uh, the, absen yes, the absence of these amenities. Mm -hmm. So as a husband or as a responsible man, you have to make sure that whatever you are saying, whether the, the home is for you or not, you have a responsibility to fix all these things, to make life convenient for you, your wife, and your children. Yes. It shouldn't be that as a married man, every day your wife will go out to beg for iron, electric iron, to come and iron your shirt. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Every day people will be, your people will be going out to go and beg people for some things. While the things are in the house, you have all of them, but unfortunately they've yeah, spoiled. Let's say you have television, as we were saying the other time. You know, sometimes with the television, sometimes too, it keeps our people in the house, yes. our, our, our family. Especially our women. Very good. You are spoiled and you are just watching. You are not doing anything. Good. Your wife, your children will go out to watch somebody's television. And we all know the consequences of that. So it's very important that we, the husbands, we, we, we take very good... Um, care of all these things. So, no doubt that there is one of the obstacles of happiness in the home. Yes. It's one of the obstacles of happiness because we are used to them. So, if they spoil, it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. And they cause problems in the marriage and health problems too. Exactly. The smart person is the one who hastens to fix these things. Mm -hmm. So, if you are smart, a good husband, whenever something that belongs to you, your home spoils, it's your duty to fix it. So that your family members will not go out yeah. to beg. May Allah grant us understanding. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Mala yeah. Awal. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we are uh, um, talking about a family's health and safety. That's also another very critical aspect of our lives that we need to pay attention to, isn't it? Yeah. No. Well, I'm not a mother, but. I'll soon or one day become very a mother. Soon, very soon, very soon, <laughs> very soon. I'm paying attention to the family's health and safety, safety. precaution. Mm. Yeah. Um, the family health as a woman, as a wife, as a mother, mm -hmm. your children, your husband, 
health must be something that you should not joke with because um, I don't think you like to be going to hospital every day. Mm-hmm. You also have to take good care of your children and your husband in the house and exactly. yourself too. What they eat, what mm-hmm. you use to cook, exactly. everything must be in order. There are certain things when they say it's not good for you to eat, you should avoid it. Mm. Like they said oil is not to use too much oil, oil. is not good. Too salt, too, too much salt, sugar. sugar. Yes, there are certain things although you don't you are not a health um, professional. Per, yeah, but there are certain small things be that we all know, we all know that, that if you helpful. yes, if you make use of those thing, those petty petty tips, it will help in the house. Mm-hmm. And the safety precaution in the house too. As a mother, you should not be um, you should not leave everything on our like um, you can't leave a water on COVID. Yes, especially when you have a a, a crying child a around. Child. Anything can happen. It can be that you may be in your room and the child will be playing, but you don't know kids. Kids, they play, they play everywhere. Mm-hmm. And fire too. You can't leave mantras everywhere. Mm-hmm. And you have to always be offering your destiny, your cylinder. Exactly. You don't know when. And we are not praying that sad things will happen, but you don't know. You don't know. We all don't know. And we are not praying that it happens. But you have to always be aware of those things and make sure those things are in order before you even go out or when you are in the house with your child <coughs> the space the water thing mm-hmm. is very bad last time it was raining and i had one um one woman send um her small boy to buy something for her but unfortunately the child didn't come back again you can't send your child when it's raining very very irresponsible no Thank so you. you should be aware of all the what, the domestic safety precautions yes. as well as the health measures that we need to take to take care of our families, especially for us, the mothers, inshallah. Um, Alhamdulillah, we have come to the end of the Muslim home. Wow. This is a small book li- booklet, too, like 40 pages <laughs> or something. Is it up to 40 pages? Some no, small 20, 23 pages. 23 pages, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we've taken, like, more than five weeks to go through it. I think it was it was it was a it was a great time, okay. and it was quite um, educative and informi- informative. You know, um, we thank Allah for bringing us to the end of this one, yeah. and we hope that the next book will also um, educate us, at least as this one or even much more than mm-hmm. this one, inshallah. So before we close for today, I will take your concluding comments and then um, two two minutes each, and then we will wrap up, inshallah. Uh, I'll start with who? Um, Abdul Fattah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Abdul um, Fattah. If you have to conclude as we do or no, I say, I give you a say we are here. And then also, when we were starting, we committed it to the hands of Allah. So mm-hmm. when we are ending too, we have to surely commit it again to the hands of Allah. Allah. So we thank Almighty Allah for bringing us up to this end. And inshallah, we thank him for his mercies and guidance upon us and also unto all those who made it possible to have all these things set for us to come and sit before him to talk to people and stuff. Very, very important. May Allah sawa his great blessings on to it and also inshallah uh, upgrade it to where it has to be. Now, again, inshallah. inshallah. Very soon. Very soon. Very soon inshallah. inshallah. And then also um, to our viewers and listeners too, may Allah richly bless them and uh, everything that they are doing to help associate with them, inshallah. Okay. Thank you very much, Malal Fata. Should I go to Awal or should I come to Zakia? I should go to him and yeah. come to you. Okay. Ladies last. Ladies last. Okay. Well, in the Masjid, comment. the ladies are always at our house. Oh, yeah. Maybe last. <laughs> okay. Awal, Awal has been through, like, the <laughs> program, I think, from the beginning yeah. of this book till now. So, um, inshallah, I think mm. it has been a journey, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've gone far. Mm-hmm. All thanks be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm-hmm. and Mam online and uh, our cherished viewers and mm-hmm. listeners. In fact, they've been there for us since day one, mm-hmm. especially those who put us on check. No. Allah, I love them. Yeah. Yes. When we misquote a verse as quick as possible, they will bring us back on track. On track yeah. Yes. When, when we misquote a hadith, they will do that. And uh, the people who ask questions, 
they also contribute or lie. And there, there's also a silent majority outside, which they don't call in during the program. But after the program, yeah. they will call you personally. They will be expressing how they love the program and they will give you recommendations. Yeah. So may Allah bless all of them. Yeah. And I also give more uh, my thanks to our host, Abdulaziz. <laughs> but he has been very, very instrumental in all this. You know, in this world, sometimes you just need a push. Just yeah. someone to push you. Yes. There are some people in our societies whose lives are now in the drains because they didn't get anyone to push, push them. them. Just a push will do all. So I will end it with a story that a scholar said that a king mm -hmm. had money, but he had only one daughter. So he wanted someone to give the daughter to. Mm -hmm. How I wish I was there at that time. <laughs> <laughs> so he had a swimming pool which was full of um, um, uh, the whales, what, 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 and the rest. The harmful aquatic animals. aquatic animals. But when he called the gentleman, no one knew they were, uh, they were inside there. So he told them, any one of you who is able to cross, swim, to cross from here to the end of this swimming pool, I'm going to give you my daughter's my daughter in marriage. So they were all eager. But when they, he sent them near the pool, they saw that these aquatic harmful animals were in there. So people started retracting. Wow, because of a lady? What if I die? Someone else will take her, so I will not go. What they heard was, Zim, that is a gentleman jumped in and started swimming fast, fast. By the time he realized he was at the end of the pool, he was all clapping, but he was crying. Even the king himself was amazed. He was very, very happy that the gentleman had taken that risk. The gentleman said, no. The credit should be given to me by the one who pushed me. I never knew I could swim. <laughs> to somebody. <laughs> Allah, <laughs> so he swam from the beginning to the end. He didn't stop. Wow. And nothing happened to him. Because so he said, he very good. He feared that he, he, he couldn't do it. But someone just pushed unconsciously. Yeah. He wasn't aware. The person just pushed. Oh, if I've been put in, I have to put up my best. <laughs> so in life, we just need a push. A push. That's what Abdul Aziz have done, Mam Online and our charity viewers. They, they, they've pushed us in. Mm. If you pushed us in, definitely we are all going to swim with all our strength. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> now, um, the last comment from our dear sister, Zakia. Yeah, it's been, it's been, well, today is my first day and I think it's the last day of the, the, um, the Muslim the home. Muslim we home. to another book. Michelle. Yes, okay. Um, well, since today is my first day, I really, I really don't know how it is, but, it's but it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, my dear, uh, uh, panelists. Without you, this program would be impossible. The book review show is, is intended at, you know, encouraging all of us, especially the Muslim youth, to engage in active reading. reading. Seriously. There are lots of Islamic books that even if you don't have money to go and buy, we all have Android phones. You don't have money to go and buy the book. You don't have money to buy a laptop. You have an Android phone. You can access all these books online. You can get them and then you can read them. Yeah. If you don't understand, you ask a scholar. These days, some of, a lot of us, most of us, we don't have time to go and sit in the madrasa and study. If you don't have time to go and sit in the madrasa and study, the books that they are using in the madrasa, most of them have been translated into English and they are available in PDF format. So you can get them and read them. This is the kind of habit we want to inculcate into the Muslim youth. So we should all see this as a challenge to all of us. Whatever book that we bring on board, we should try and read the book and we should try and get involved in the program. This is why we brought this program. And we, 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 we encourage everybody to try as much as possible to get themselves involved. Reading is what makes us better than the other people. The people who do not read, they better not live at all, seriously. So let's try and make reading our habit, inshallah. Inshallah, next week, 
we will begin with a whole new book altogether. The next book is The Youth's Problems and Solutions, written by Sheikh Mohammed Saleh Al Uteyi. Yes. So this book is a fantastic book, in fact. Um, if you need a PDF, you can just you know PM me or PM any of the mom administrators, and then we'll get you a copy, inshallah. From next week, this is the book that we are going to be treating um, on the book review show, Mama Line. My name has been Abdul Aziz Shahid Ishaq, your host. Um, sure. And um, before we end the briefing, I would like to chip in this thing no. by pleading to the um, our brothers and sisters out there, mm. whoever is listening to us and stuff that, as we can see, when I came here, I was much happy. Why? Because an Islamic association, mm. I, I even learned they are just young, young people. No. The married ones are just few. few. But looking at the kind of energy that they are putting up to set all these things for us to also do something Islamically, no. this is like, really, really amazing. Mm. So we are just pleading to the Omar, to everybody who is listening to us, wherever these voices are going to, mm -hmm. we are begging them that when we came, what we have seen, mm. like we here needs to be changed. Exactly. So in sh even what we are seeing, we need to be on, upgraded. You see. Eh, what we are even sitting on, we just don't want the camera to just Capture. take it. Yes, if not, but we are begging they should really come to their aid to, in order to help to bring Islam forward. We have nothing to, we have nothing to appreciate Allah yes. than to use what we have in service to Him. Inshallah, yes. we are begging to everybody to come to our aid. Mm. Inshallah, yes. so that Mom. Um, Book review to this, this, yes, yeah, this is a very important. The first that I came, that was my very um, dream of it. That yes. I, at least if a chair to sit, mom, um, um book review has to uh -huh, take that yeah. thing. Uh, <laughs> you shall, you shall, you shall, you shall surely donate to you shall, the yeah, association shall, at least shall, a chair for the preachers to come like the tea, they've been <laughs> seven <laughs> hours. <laughs> <of bread. laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, it's good, it's good. So they, they need support, they need support. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You are speechless now? <laughs> ah. <laughs> we'll meet next week, inshallah. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <laughs> Yen jen ye mofra da chen hon. Suku hon hiyan. E disyan ye. Pe wo mofre disyan hon pou men si bre. Na da chen wa anye mobo. Nene yi ou pe suku. Ama wo mofra e suyan buku mou nyansan. E fye nyansan. E ni wo njitye hon fa pe man. Fa wo mofra ne kwa Leading Edge Academy. Ye wo conducive learning environment. Fantastic boarding facility. Pe biya wo biya wo kumasi hano. School bus. Beba be peke wo mano. E di yo mabo school premises. Ye gusua e fa mofra. Leading Edge Academy, the Mount Quadano Standard and Quality Education from Crutch, Nursery, KG, Primary, NJHS, Kaise, the Trem Quadano ICT, Sawbano Eye Muslim, Israel, your Arabic class, I a Trem Hizul Quran, and now Quran member.